whether and when Earth-originating life will go extinct, whether it will colonize the galaxy, whether human biology will be fundamentally transformed to make us post-human, whether machine intelligence will surpass biological intelligence, whether population size will explode, and whether quality of life will radically improve or deteriorate. Revelation. It's just one word, yet it shares many meanings. Some associate it with revealing things that are hidden. Others see it as discovering ideas that were once unknown. Still, some see it as a vision of things to come. There's a massive monument that stands in the remote location of Elbert County, Georgia. It's known as the American Stonehenge, also known as the Georgia Guidestones. Inscribed on this landmark entails sinister prospects for the future of humanity. They are Ten Commandments, purported by many staunch environmentalists and hopeful utopians worldwide. One of the commandments reads as follows. Maintain humanity under 500,000 in perpetual balance with nature. To prove its message is universal and a driving pursuit since the beginning of civilization, four ancient languages are engraved on the capstone, including Babylonian cuneiform, Sanskrit, Egyptian hieroglyphics, and classical Greek. The message is also translated in eight modern languages, from English to Swahili, appearing on the four slabs of granite rock underneath. Environmental threats seem to have displaced nuclear holocaust as the chief specter haunting the public imagination. Current-day pessimists about the future often focus on the environmental problems facing the growing world population, worrying that all our wasteful and polluting ways are unsustainable and potentially ruinous to human civilization. In the year 1900, there were less than 2 billion people on the planet. Today, there are 7.7 .7 billion a number much, much higher than the prescribed number listed in the Georgia Guidestones. The message of the Georgia Guidestones seems to call for at least 90% of the world population to be wiped out. The passage about maintaining humanity at a population of a half billion or less would require a massive dying off of humanity, the likes of which we've never seen. Many of the tenets of the Georgia Guidestones are hailed by some high-level politicians and policymakers worldwide. Two metrics determine the world population, the number of babies born and the number of people dying. It makes one think about why certain groups support abortion and euthanasia, while others support procreation and the sanctity of life. For the most part, the future of humanity has been a topic for theology. Quite often, the future has served as a projection screen for our hopes and fears, or as a stage setting for dramatic entertainment, morality tales, or satire of tendencies in the contemporary society or as a banner for ideological mobilization. As we've seen in the age of coronavirus and forced lockdowns, most people are not ready for change, especially forced change. It's important to understand that what we are experiencing right now is a seasonal change on a symbolic, geological, and spiritual nature. It's not that we are changing, but people are being shown things that they may not be ready to see and hearing things that they may not be ready to hear. This is known as a revelation. But before we go deeper in the weeds in the fate of humanity and the meaning of life, first, let's discuss technology, growth, and directionality. Think back 20 years ago in the 90s. Cell phones were known as car phones and were larger and thicker than our hands. Only the rich had them. Personal computing was just starting to saturate the market with word processors slowly phasing out of the workplace. The internet was simply a concept to most. Some were able to leverage it for their own personal advantage as they entered dating chat rooms, joined gaming LAN parties, and discovered online gambling outlets. There was no such thing as TV streaming or on-demand channels, only programs by time slot. You'd have to program your VCR to record your favorite show at that certain time, or else you'd miss it. And what is a VCR? Good question. Simply put, it's old technology, just like 8-tracks record players, cassette tapes, and now even DVDs and CD-ROMs. The point? We have advanced warp speed in technology. Today, just about everyone has a cell phone that can retrieve email, take pictures, track your tasks and events, track a budget, and answer questions on just about anything. The internet has us all on the hook to help perform just about all of our daily functions, including work, school, searching for employment, planning a vacation, shopping for essentials and non-essentials alike, and have it all delivered right to our doorstep. And the internet keeps us connected to our family, friends, interest groups, and the community at large. We rely on it for just about everything. 
And what would happen if the internet was suddenly no longer available? We'd have to go back 20 years and live each day the old-fashioned way. Search and apply for jobs listed in the newspaper classified ads. Students would have to call a classmate and ask for a copy of their notes or negotiate with their teacher if they missed a class session. Tourists would have to go back to fighting the busy signal on a phone line while working with a travel agent to book a vacation. Shopping centers would be just as crowded as ever, with supply barely meeting any demand. Delivery workers would have a drastic reduction in force. Except maybe the pizza guy who would still be safe. And with the absence of social media and video calls, staying connected with family and friends would take a greater amount of effort in more phone calls, letters, pictures, and care packages. But let's dig deeper, beyond the surface, and think about what powers the internet. That's right, it works through a series of computer networks that connect devices around the world through telephone lines. Users are provided access to the internet by internet service providers. The widespread use of mobile broadband and Wi-Fi in the 21st century has allowed this connection to be wireless. What began as a largely technical and limited universe of designers and users became one of the most important mediums of the late 20th and early 21st centuries. As the Pew Charitable Trust observed in 2004, it took 46 years to wire 30% of the United States for electricity. It only took seven years for the internet to reach the same level of connection to American homes. By 2005, 68% of American adults and 90% of American teenagers had used the internet. Going back to the question, what would happen if the internet suddenly became unavailable? The answer goes far beyond simply reverting back to the 90s lifestyle. If the internet suddenly became unavailable, it would be because the electricity used to power the computer and phone lines that power the internet also suddenly became unavailable. Can you imagine any city in the world today without power? Think of traffic lights that suddenly stop functioning, refrigerators no longer sustaining food, air traffic controllers not able to properly guide aircraft to safety, and sinister deeds and crimes of the night taking longer to be exposed. Hundreds and thousands would die from such ramifications. Unfortunately, this scenario is a real possibility especially with China having the most active ballistic missile development program in the world. According to many recent reports, China used stolen U.S. technology to develop at least three types of high-tech weapons to attack the electrical grid, and key technologies that could cause a surprise Pearl Harbor type of attack that could produce a deadly blackout to an entire country. According to a report from the Independent EMP Task Force on National and Homeland Security, China has built a network of satellites, high-speed missiles, and super-electromagnetic pulse weapons that could melt down the U.S. electric network, fry critical communications, and stifle aircraft carrier groups. These efforts come as China, Russia, North Korea, and Iran moved to build and deploy the weapons, which, essentially, launch a nuclear weapon into the atmosphere to explode and disable electronics below, including a flying aircraft. For most, this doesn't sound like the kind of party you would want to stick around for. Going back to the Book of Revelation, understanding the vulnerability of power grids, the passage found in Revelation 9-1 brings new insight. Then the fifth angel sounded his trumpet, and I saw a star that had fallen from heaven to earth, and it was given the key to the pit of the abyss. Perhaps a study of the Bible, particularly the book of Revelation as relates to current events, might help us bring some insight into the future of humanity. Despite all the doom and gloom, the end actually does seem promising for those who seek the wisdom to discern such matters. When it comes to matters of humanity, it's wise to seek the counsel from above, because surely none of us have all the answers. If you liked the video, a sub to the channel would be incredible, and also share the video to spread the word. You can watch another video just click left or right. Keep inspiring.